Hello, beautiful people, and welcome. In this video, we will be preparing for our quiz on modules 17 and 18, which is right triangle trigonometry as well as angles. So the first thing I want to go through is angles. We're going to draw out here our x and our y. Recall that if you go towards the positives, you are going counterclockwise, and your angle is going to be positive. If you're going towards the negatives, you're going clockwise, and your angle is going to be negative. With that being said, we have revolution cycles, rotations. You'll hear all of that. Uh, they're kind of synonyms for the same thing. So if you go one full, and we'll go uh, counterclockwise for positives. If you go one full rotation, that would be 360 degrees or 2 pi. If you go half a rotation, that would be 180 degrees or just pi. If you go a quarter of a rotation, that's going to be either 90 degrees or pi halves. And if you go 3 fourths of the way, so 1 pi half, 1 quarter, 2 pi halves for 2 quarters, 3 quarters, which is 1 pi half, 2 pi half, 3 pi halves, you are at 3 pi halves or 270 degrees. Now the cycle doesn't end with one revolution. Uh, the cycle continues, continues. So you can have four pi, four pi plus a half, four pi plus two pi halves, and you can continue that like on and on and on. That's why we have arrows. Now remember, if you're going negative, then all of these, the quarter and the three fourths of the way, so three pi halves, those two will switch because direction will switch. All right, knowing that, let's go ahead and jump in here. So question number one is asking us to find the measure of each angle. So for the measure of the angle, we are going direction. We're going towards the negatives. So that means we're going to have a negative angle. It's going clockwise. We have traveled half a rotation. So that means we have gone 180 degrees. And notice that this little piece right here that we've traveled is 30. So that means we have traveled 180 degrees plus an additional 30, which means we have traveled 200 and, oh, excuse me, we have traveled 210 degrees. Now it's a little bit more challenging with radians in my personal opinion. So this one here gives us many, many, many rotations. So let's see here. We have traveled clockwise, so we're going towards the positive, one full rotation, that is 2 pi. We have now traveled another full rotation. This is another 2 pi. We have then traveled half of a rotation. You can do 3 fourths if you want, but half of a rotation, which is pi, we then have traveled a quarter of a rotation, which is pi halves, and we have traveled this little bit right here. And I'm going to put a little marker here. So this little bit is the last measure that we need in order to calculate the total distance traveled. Unfortunately, I don't know this right now, but I do know that this part right here, I'll highlight it, this part is pi six. Well, the distance between, I'm trying to see if I can come up with different colors here. The distance between these two rays, right? The distance between our initial ray and this y is a quarter. And we know that a quarter is pi halves. So if we traveled pi halves, we would have traveled a quarter, but we didn't. We did not travel pi 6, so I'm going to remove pi 6 from pi halves. I'm going to multiply here top and bottom by 3. So you have 3 pi 6 minus 1 pi 6. So that means this distance right here is 2 pi 6. Now, 2 pi 6 can be converted and simplified into like a denominator of 3. I'm going to keep it. If you wish to simplify it, you can. I'm going to keep it here. 
Now, we have to add all of this up in order to know what our total distance is. Notice that our denominator is a 2 and our denominator is a 6, and then we have no denominators for these three. So that means we do need to convert everything to common denominators before we get to do anything. I'm going to put a 1 underneath here. And common denominator would be a 6, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 6. Now you can do this translation or this conversion to a common denominator before you do your cycles, and we'll do that in the next question. So we have six times two is 12, so we have 12 pi six plus 12 pi six plus six pi six plus, oh, and this one I almost messed up. We don't need to multiply this one by six, we need to multiply this one by three in order to get six, so by three, by 3, so we have 3 pi 6, and then 2 pi 6. Calculator time, you can do this by hand if you want. 12 plus 12 plus 6 plus 3 plus 2, and we get 35 pi 6 as the total distance. Now again, we did travel towards the positive when we initially started. This one here, this blue one, so that means the distance is positive. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next one is asking us to draw the angle with a given measure. So this is something that you could have done in question number two is convert first and then you can change it. So I'm gonna convert, I have two pi, pi and pi halves. And I'm going to convert that to common denominators to see what my distance are. My common denominator would be 18 because this is 18. There will be a pi in each one. We're not doing anything with pi. And we're going to say 18 times 2 is 36. This one's just 18. 18 divided by 2, and that is 9. So we need to travel a positive. Again, positive means counter clockwise. That means you're just going towards the positives. Now, I need to travel a distance of 19, so the closest one I have is this 18 here. 18 is a half rotation or half cycle. Sometimes you'll even hear period, half, half a period. So we're going to go to from our initial ray to this pi, right, this 18. This is 18 pi over 18. Now we need to go uh, one more pi to get to this 19 pi 18. Again, make sure that on your angle measure that that curve does have an angle so we know that, excuse me, that curve does have an arrow so we know where it's pointing to. For the reference angle, same thing, we're going to draw it out. Uh, when it, we are looking at degrees, I tend to like to split it up. So I know I'm going to have 360, so I'm kind of saying 690 minus 360. So this is 360 plus, that means I have a 330 left over, but I can split up 330 into another one. Now, options are like this. I'm going to erase this just for a second. I'm going to do this off to the side because you'll see me do it maybe with a different example. You can overshoot or you can undershoot. What I mean by that is one full cycle is 360 degrees or two pi. Half a cycle is 180 or pi. A quarter is 90 degrees or pi halves. If you overshoot, you just subtract. For example, 360, Oops, 360 degrees plus 360 degrees. That is equal to 720. But 720 is rather close to the 690. But I need to subtract something from 720 in order to get my 690, which we need. So I'm going to remove that 30 degrees. So when you are sketching this out, you are going positive, right? 360, 360 is positive. So you're going one full rotation, 
you're going another full rotation. And then right here, right, you're going two full rotations. You're removing 30 degrees. So you're going backwards 30. Let me draw that out. Here. Again, we're going positive, so we have one full rotation, 360, another full rotation, 360, and then we are removing, we're going backwards 30 degrees. When you are removing going backwards 30 degrees, that is where your terminal ray is. So you didn't actually go two full cycles. You went one cycle, half a cycle, a quarter of a cycle, and then this much more. So we are removing that 30 degrees. Now for a reference angle, a reference angle is a small acute angle. So reference angle has four options. It must touch the x-axis. So it's either one, two, three, or four. Those are your options. So it looks like this is our number four. This right here is your reference angle. And in this case, it's already given to us by the way that we solved it, which was 30 degrees. So if we go back here and it says we'll find the reference angle, this is 30 degrees. For radians, I'll do that on a different sheet of paper here. This is question number five, negative five pi six. Negative five pi six is asking us for a reference angle. Again, I'm gonna split this up. I have two pi, which is 12 pi six. I have a pi, which is 6 pi 6, and I have half a pi, which is 3 pi 6. Which one's the closest? The closest one we have is this one here, so half of a rotation. But notice that half of a rotation is too big. We need 5 pi 6. So we, when we draw it, let's do negative 5 pi 6. That is equal to 6 pi 6. And then we're going to add... 1 pi 6 to that in order to get a negative. So I'm going to start, I'm going to go towards the negative since my angle is negative, and I'm going to go half of a rotation because that's what we have, half. However, I'm going to backtrack, I'm going to remove, since they're opposite symbols, I'm going to remove 1 pi 6. So I, this section right here is pi 6, and that looks like our, if we go back up here, our option number 3. And so our option number three right here would be pi six as our reference angle. Converting for six and seven, if you have a degree and you want a radian, go ahead and put pi on top, 180 on the bottom. If you have radians and you want degrees, go ahead and put 180 on top and divide by pi. When you do that here, Please do not use your calculator. I mean, you can use your calculator. Just don't give me a decimal answer. Negative 315 pi over 180. Simplify that. And I am using my calculator just to simplify. So I have negative 7 pi fourths as my answer. This one here, your pi's will cancel out. So you have 61 times 180 divided by 36. Oops. Didn't mean to move the paper. 61 times 180 divided by 36. And I get, oh, let me make sure I type that into the calculator right. 61 times 180 divided by 36. And that gives me 305 degrees. Now, again, please, 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 if you are using your calculator, that's fine. I mean, I did. Just no decimals. You can't have a decimal. All right, let's go ahead and move on. This one here is finding a positive and a negative coterminal angle. Oh, excuse me, this one. Coterminal angles are just angles that start and stop at the same spot. So they start in the initial ray and they end at the terminal ray. The difference between like your angle and a coterminal angle is the quantity of cycles. So the quantity of loop-de-loops. The rotations are different. So all you have to do is add and subtract full cycles. So, so let me see if I can spell that. So if, for example, you have degrees, you're going to add or subtract 360. If you have radians, you're going to add or subtract 2 pi. 
So in this case here, we want one positive, one negative. So I have 205 if I add 360. That will be 205 plus 360. That's 565 degrees. This is your positive. 205 minus 360. That's negative 155 degrees. And that's your secondary coterminal angle. Now for this one here, we do have a negative, negative pi thirds. I'm going to add to that 2 pi. Now 2 pi is not a fraction. This is a fraction. So we're going to have to convert that. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 3. So I have 6 pi thirds as my one full cycle. So we're going to have negative 5 pi thirds as our coterminal angle, as negative. And then I'm going to, ooh, positive, excuse me, positive. And then I'm going to subtract 6 pi thirds, which gives me 7 pi thirds for the secondary negative coterminal angle. 10, 11, 12, 13, this one's asking for your sine cosine tangent. This is where you're going to need SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA here is opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. So sine, again, make sure that you have your theta, your eyeball. This is your opposite. This is your hypotenuse. So sine of theta, make sure you have theta. If you have missing theta, it's going to be marked incorrect. So sine of theta is opposite, which is 6, over hypotenuse, which is 3 root 5. Now you will need to convert and rationalize the denominator if necessary. So we have 6 times root 5 divided by 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So we have sine of theta equal to 6 times root 5 divided by 15. Now, we can simplify that further. I just noticed that we have a 6 and we have a 15. So sine of theta is equal to 2, excuse me, 3 goes into 6 twice, and 3 goes into 15 five times. So this right here is your final answer. I'm going to choose a random one. Let's do one like a cosecant here. Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine. So SOHCAHTOA, we have now hypotenuse over opposite. Here's your hypotenuse. Here's your opposite. So hypotenuse is 13, opposite is 5. So cosecant of theta is 13 over 5. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. This one here, question number 17, is asking us to find the measure of the indicated angle to the nearest degree. So to the nearest degree, that means you're going to round, and that means calculator. This is where you may potentially end up with a decimal. Same thing here, round to the nearest tenth. So this is calculator. This one here, we're going to write SOHCAHTOA because we do have a right angle. And the question is, which ratio do you use? Whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose to do opposite over adjacent. Why? Just because. So I'm going to use tangent. Tangent of theta is equal to opposite, which is 36, over adjacent, which is 48. You're going to take the inverse or use the inverse. So inverse of tangent of 36 over 48 is equal to theta. This is where you're going to type that into your calculator. Make sure you use the inverse, not the original. Inverse tangent of 36 divided by 48. And that equals to theta being 36.86. Now it is asking us to round it to the whole degree, to so the nearest whole number. So that would be 37 degrees for your theta. Next one here is saying in each problem, angle C is a right angle. This is important because otherwise we cannot use SOHCAHTOA. So that means SOHCAHTOA. Find the angle indicated to the nearest tenth. Um, let's just do this one here. Since we do have a right angle, this is our C. Little c is 14.9 then. Let's make this B. Little b is now 9. And we want to find the measurement of B. 
they have nothing about A here, and that's okay. Across the street from B is the opposite. Across the street here is your hypotenuse. And this one here, you do have to use a specific ratio because you don't know that third side. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that means sine of B or theta, if we put theta here, opposite is 9, hypotenuse is 14.9. We're going to take the inverse just like we did in the previous example. And that's equal to your theta. Now this one does want us rounding to the nearest tenth, not a whole number. So we're going to take the inverse of sine, pressing the wrong button, inverse of sine, 9 divided by 14.9, and that is equal to 37.158-ish. It is asking us to round to the nearest tenth, so theta or the measurement of angle B is equal to 37.2 degrees. Okay, almost there you guys, a few more. All right, on this one here, it's asking us in each problem, angle C is the right angle. I'm gonna skip on 20, it's very similar to the 19 that we just did. Find each measure, measure indicated round your answers to the nearest 10. Now, for these section, this is not a right angle. Nowhere in the directions do they tell you you have a right angle. You cannot use Sokotoa. This is where you have to use law of sine or law of cosine. Now, it does matter which one you use because one, one can be used for a certain given information. The other one uses for the other certain information. Draw it out always. Let's do, I'm going to randomly pick 21 and let's do, I don't know, 25. For 21, it's asking us to find the measurement of angle C when the measurement of angle A is 75 degrees. Little c is 7, and little a is 28. Let's draw a triangle. How you draw a triangle doesn't really matter as long as you for sure know you do not have a right angle. Let's say angle a is here at 75 degrees. Let's say angle c here, this is what we want. Little c is 7, and little a is 28. Identify the three pieces of information that you have. If you can make a ratio, something to something as something is to something, then it means you have a law of sine. If you cannot make a proportional, you know, rations, then you have to use law of cosine. So always try law of sine first. So sine of 75 over 28 is equal to sine of C over 7. If you can make this setup, then use law of sine. If you set this up and you have two unknowns, go ahead and use law of cosine. Our unknown is in the numerator. We're just going to multiply by 7 then. So we have 7 times sine of 75 divided by 28. That's equal to sine of C. Now this right here is just some sort of number. My calculator knows it better than I do. So 7 times sine of 75 divided by 28. And that is an icky number. 0 0.241 is equal to sine of C. Now, this value right here has to be within your domain in order for us to take the inverse. That means for sine, it has to be between negative 1 and 1. If you are outside of that domain, when you are taking the inverse, your calculator is going to tell you you have a syntax error or a domain error and a triangle doesn't exist. In this case, it is between negative one and one, so you're good. Take the inverse. Now, this two, four, one is a rounded version of whatever I have in my calculator. I'm not actually typing 0 0.241 in my calculator. I'm using the full decimal that the calculator provides for a more accurate answer. So we have C is equal to 13.97. I'm looking, it's asking us to round, let me make sure I am rounding, to the nearest tenth. And if they're asking us to round to the nearest tenth, it's just going to be 14 degrees. Now, 
Because we have used law of sine to try and find an angle, this potentially could be a situation where we have one answer and we could have multiple answers. So you have to check for answer number two. So the way you check for a secondary angle is you're going to take 180, subtract the given angle. 180 minus 14, and that's equal to 166. This here is your maybe angle. We don't know if this works or not. We're going to have to check. You're going to check your maybe by saying 180 degrees is equal to your given angle plus your maybe angle plus your third angle. Now I'm gonna put room question mark. What that means is we don't really care what that third angle is right now because they're asking us to solve for the angle of C. There it is. If for adding them up, let me rephrase that. When we add them up, if there is no room for a third angle, that means your maybe degree here, 166, is not possible. We can't make a triangle if we don't have a third angle. So given to us was 75, maybe is 166, 75 plus 166, this already is 241. That means there cannot be room for a third angle. And that means that this maybe doesn't work and you have one solution only. Let's try another one. 25 is giving you 15.8 for your measurement for C. This is little c. Little a is 12.3. Little b is 21.5. And we want to find the measurement of angle b. Let's draw this out again. Not a right angle. So not a right triangle. So we have little c, let's make this measurement of c, little c is 15.8, a is 12.3, b is 21.5, and then we're trying to find the measurement of angle b. Now notice if we were to try and set up a proportion, uh, I don't think we can because we don't have the measurement of a or the measurement of c. 15.8 across the street doesn't have an, a measurement, and A doesn't have a measurement, which is across from 12.3. So law of sine cannot work here. So we have to go with law of cosine. Now, I prefer to use law of cosine backwards, so I write my law of cosine backwards, which is, which is weird. I know. I understand. I'm a weird human being. But that's okay. So I'm going to say cosine of your angle B times the side lengths that are right next to it. So angle B is considered an included angle. It's inside these two sides. So we're going to say 12.3, and the order of 12.3 and 15.8 don't matter. We're going to multiply that by 2 minus, and we're going to take those two sides, square them, and add them. So I have 12.3 and 15.8. Again, order of these two don't matter, and that's equal to the opposite. Where is it? opposite side length of the angle that you have chosen. So if this is B, this has to be little b as well. Let's go ahead and type this in. Make sure that you have two things separated. You have, uh, technically three, you have where your equal sign is. You also have the summation separated from this multiplication. Keep them separate. Do not combine them. 21.5 squared is 462.25. 12.3 squared plus 15.8 squared. That gives us 400.93 minus 2. Oh, let's actually type that in. 2 times 15.8 times 13, excuse me, 12.3. That gives me. 388.68 times the cosine of B. We're going to subtract and 
Again, we're keeping this separate from these two numbers. Oops. 462.25 minus 400. And that gives us 61.32 minus 388.68. We're going to then divide we get a negative 0 0.157765 is equal to cosine of b take the inverse Again, type it into my calculator. I feel like I'm, I'm talking a little bit less on this one since there's a little bit more to do. And again, this is just what I'm, I'm writing on the paper. What I'm actually using on the, on the calculator is much longer decimal. And it gives me B is equal to 99.07. And it is asking us to run to the nearest tenth. So I have 99.1 degrees. For our last section, I did pre-draw this question number 28. Uh, we will be needing the area formula for a triangle. Now this here, this C, is your included angle. So it doesn't have to be exactly C. Uh, it can be any included angle. It just matters that these two sides include this third angle right here. So. Let's go ahead and set it up. So I'm looking for an included angle and I don't have one. Uh, an included angle, so if we were to draw this out, for example, an included angle would be this one here. Let's, let's say B. We would have a number here and a number here. That means B is included. I don't have an included angle in the questions that they've given us. If I use A as my included angle, I would need 12 and I would need this right here, this side, this AC. If I were to use C, then for C, I would need both, actually. For C, if I was to use C as an included angle, I would need this guy and this guy. So I think I'm going to choose to use A as my included angle in order to find for the area. However, I'm going to have to probably use a different formula first, either law of sine or law of cosine, in order to determine what the segment AC is. So I'm going to mark it as X. We know that this guy is 29 degrees. We know that this is 12. And we know that this is angle A. Uh, what else do we know? We know angle C. So I'm just going to write this very small here at 126. There's B and there's C. So if we use, I'm thinking maybe law of sine, if we can get away with law of sine, because if I have angle C and I have side C, then I have angle A, I can figure out this side. But that's not necessarily the side I'm looking for. I'm looking for this side right here, this x. So perhaps law of cosine would actually be better. So if we were to have law of cosine and we wanted to use to find x, I would have to then go across the street and know the value of b. Well, what is the value of b? Well, the value of b is 180 degrees minus 29 and 126 because of the triangle interior angle sum. So we have 180 minus 29 minus 126. That means the angle of B is 25. However, now that we know that 25 is the angle of B, we can then jump in and use law of sine because now I have a ratio that we can use. So I'm going to use sine of 126 over 12 is equal to sine of B, which is 25, over X. Setting it up this way will give me this X value that I have determined we need to for the area of the triangle. Okay, so then we have 
times x times x, I'm going to choose to take the reciprocal of both sides. That way I don't have to deal with multiplying by x both sides. I have 12 divided by sine of 126 is equal to x over sine of 25. Multiplying both sides by sine of 25. Again, sine of 25 is just some number. My calculator knows that number. Both sides cancel out. We have x is equal to whatever sine of 25 times 12 divided by sine of 126. Please, please, please don't start canceling anything out. Don't start canceling signs out. It's a number in your calculator. You have to type it in. So 12 times sine of 25, oop, 25, divided by sine of 126. And that gives us 6.268-ish. Now, because it's not actually what we want, we want the area. So I'm going to kind of leave it as such. For the actual things that we need for the area formula, I'm going to use the full decimal length. Let's draw out the, or write out the area formula one more time. One half times A times B times sine of C. Again, this is just the included angle. We decided that our included angle was in fact A, 29. That means we have 12 and whatever we solved for, which is 6.268-ish. Again, I'm going to use the full amount on the calculator. And to multiplying by 1 half, and that equals to the area. So I'm going to do 1 half times that full big number times 12 times your sine of 29. And that gives us the area of that triangle to be 18 point. And let's see actually what they want us to round to. And they want us to round to the nearest tenth. And that answer is 0.2. And again, this is area. Area, they've given us units, which is meters. So area is meters. And area is always squared. So we have to put an exponent of 2. All right, beautiful people, that is it for the review. We will practice some, some more in class. If you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you so much for watching my video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.